First Taishoku set meal is this. Milfi katsu, layered tonkatsu. The word milfi means thousand leaves in French. In Japan, it refers to a pastry made of layers of pie crust and cream. And today I'd like to introduce tonkatsu, which is associated with this layer. Use six such thin slices of pork. I think pork loin is good. The number of pieces is your choice, but I recommend this quantity as it was very tasty. Sprinkle salt and pepper on one side of all pork pieces. You can do without, but if you like, put cheese in between. If the cheese is too large, it will pop out when fried, so I recommend cutting the cheese to this size. All the pork is layered, but with cheese in between each layer, it had a different taste from the pork cutlet made with regular thick pork. And my husband really liked it. The cheese is also a factor, but the texture is different from that of a regular pork cutlet, which is also fun to eat. I'm gonna make butter here, mix beaten egg, flour, and water. Coat the pork with flour. If the cheese comes out while frying, it's a disaster, so flour the size well too. Thoroughly dip butter in pork, and then put panko on it. It has a nice pork palette like shape. Fry in oil for 3 minutes on each side for a total of 6 minutes. I made it with cheese today, but next time I might add shiso and pickle plum paste. I cut the cheese into thin stripes so it didn't pop out, and I was relieved to see it fry safely and cleanly. The layered pork and crunchy butter are really delicious. It was a perfect match with the cheese. Eat it with tonkatsu sauce. The recipe for this miso soup will appear later. Next one is Japanese ginger pork teishoku. First, I wanna start with making the sauce for ginger pork. Grate ginger, put sake, mirin, soy sauce, and sugar. Mix well. Slice this onion. If there are too many onions, the flavor will be blunt, so leave it at that. Prepare thinly sliced pork. Some people make it with thicker pork. Peel off each piece of pork. Once in the bowl with the onions, stir in the sauce. Refrigerate for 20 minutes to soak up the flavors. The meat will be tender if it's put with onions. Here I'm gonna prepare miso soup. By the way, this video introduces three types of miso soup. Add water for two cups of miso soup bowl, bring to a boil. Today I'll make the simplest miso soup using tofu and wakame, diced tofu, and put it in the pot. Put dried wakame directly into the pot. It's best to put it in after the water comes to a boil. Simmer for about 1 minute and then just add miso. Once the pork is well seasoned, pan fry it. To soften the onions, put them in first and fry them a little. When the onions are cooked to some extent, add pork and sauce. Stir fry until you cook through. If you are short on time, Lightly dust the pork with potato starch and cook it before adding the sauce. That way you can make tasty ginger pork without letting the seasoning soak in for 20 minutes. Reheat the miso soup a little, turn off the heat and add the miso. If you use dash powder, you can add it here or when you cook the ingredients. My miso paste is already contains dashi. Serve on the plate with vegetables. You should definitely try ginger pork and Japanese mayonnaise together. Next one is assorted fried food teishoku. It's called mixed fried teishoku in Japanese. What kind of fried food is served depends on the restaurant. In most cases, there are three types. What kind of fried food will be served in my recipe? Look forward to it! 
first cut this potato into thin slices. As always, I like to cook in the microwave, so cut small thin slices so that they cook quickly. Today I heated it for 3 minutes at 500 watt because the quantity was small. Mash it with a fork. I'll add this to something later. Next, cut onion. It doesn't have to be minced, but I try to cut it into small pieces. Fry with butter. Add a pinch of salt and pepper. When the onions are slightly browned, add white sauce. It's made of flour, oil, milk, onion, butter, sugar, salt and so on. You can make it yourself by combining flour, butter and milk, but I bought canned because it tastes better and is easier. Add a little bit of milk. Season it with consomme or use other stock powder, salt and pepper. If you make the white sauce from scratch, you should add more consomme, salt and pepper. Mix well while heating. Turn off the heat and add the crab sticks and corn. Then add the mashed potatoes you just made. Add a little at a time so that the potatoes are well mixed. Potatoes tend to form small lumps, so mix while mashing with a spatula. Add potatoes until the mixture is this thick. Transfer to a container and cool roughly. After some heat is removed, place in the freezer. Freeze for 20 to 30 minutes to harden. Prepare shrimp while chilling. Devein and clean shrimps. Make several slits in the belly of the shrimp to straighten the meat. Wipe the shrimp through it dry. And coat with flour. After being well floured, place them in the batter for a beautiful finish. Make batter by mixing beaten egg, flour, and water. Mix well. Combine this amount of ingredients. Dip the shrimp in plenty of butter and then in the panko. Next, let's prepare miso soup. I'm gonna use onion and carrot this time. I'll add the main ingredient later though. Cook this first and finish the miso soup when the main dish is ready. Bring to a boil. Then simmer for 2 minutes and turn off the heat. Next, prepare the third type of fried food. Remove tender from chicken tenders. In a small bowl, combine mayonnaise. Sake, soy sauce, salt and pepper, garlic powder, and potato starch. Mix well. Marinate the chicken tenders in this sauce for 20 minutes. Rub through it to soak up the flavor. Now that the oysters and potato paste made earlier have cooled, form them into a shape. Wipe off any moisture that was released. Form into desired size and shape. I think the smaller ones are easier to fry. You can use the butter you just made. By the way, this is a reproduction of a crab cream croquette. That is a standard and popular item in this set meal. Originally, the base is only white sauce, but I add potatoes as well. This would make it easier to put together and form. Now, let's fry the shrimp. It should be fried for 2-3 to three minutes on each side. In the end, the shrimp got bent. I think I'll use bamboo screws next time. Fry the creamy croquette too. I fry them for only 2 minutes on each side because frying them longer will cause the filling to come out. Be careful when turning it over or taking it out as it's soft. Finally, prepare panko for the previously marinated chicken tenders. Add cheese to make it even better. 
Mix panko with parmesan cheese. Cut the chicken celery. I put mayonnaise in it and let it marinate so I don't need butter. Deep fry until golden brown and done. It's thin and I think it should only take about 2 minutes on each side. Let's come back to miso soup. Bring the soup to boil again. Crack the egg directly into the pot. Cook over low heat for 1 to 2 minutes. Turn off the heat and dissolve the miso. Stir in soup, being careful not to break up the eggs. I really recommend the miso soup with egg which is creamy and filling. It took a little time but this set meal was highly satisfying. Eat with tonkatsu sauce or your favorite sauce. Next one is hamburger steak teishoku. First miso onion. When making hamburger steak, I try to cut them as finely as possible. Add oil here for juicy hamburger steak. Mix through it and microwave. 2 to 3 minutes at 500 watts. Transfer to a large bowl. Add panko. Milk. And beaten egg. Cool the onions thoroughly before mixing them with the meat. Mixing with this and then cooling is a shortcut. Today's miso soup uses leftover onions and this turnip, which I got cheaply at the supermarket. This leaf is also used. Turnips are great vegetables for making pickles, but they are also good in miso soup. Add water. Once cooked, turn off the heat. When the onions have cooled, add the meat. Equal amounts of ground beef and ground pork were added. Sprinkle salt and pepper. A pinch of sugar. Nutmeg. Cumin. And Worcestershire sauce. Mix well. Worcestershire sauce is perfect for this dish as it contains a variety of fruits and spices. If not available, substitute your favorite spices. Mix like this until it becomes sticky. It's easier to form it after putting oil on your hands. I made a large size like a hamburger steak at the restaurant. Cook over medium heat for 3 minutes to brown. Reduce heat to lower, cover and cook for 3 minutes. While waiting, make the sauce. Put ketchup, Worcestershire sauce, soy sauce, and mirin. Mix well. Remove the hamburger steak once. The juices can be left in the pan, but the gray matter should be removed. Add sauce and butter and warm. When the butter is melted, Put the hamburger steak back in. Cook over low heat to allow the sauce to soak in on both sides. Cook for 2 minutes on each side, turning over halfway through. Finish the miso soup as the hamburger steaks are done. Dissolve miso paste as usual. It's even tastier when tofu or fried tofu is added if desired. Serve on the plate with salad. Best served with a fried egg. Add plenty of sauce. Next one is crispy and juicy karaage teishoku. Using this method, you can make delicious karaage that is crispy on the outside and juicy on the inside, just like at a restaurant. Cut the chicken into bite-sized pieces. Before seasoning the chicken, dip it in water mixed with the sugar and salt. I told you how to do this in the izakaya video, but please watch it again and review it. By the way, today's karage flavor is a little different from izakaya version. This way, the chicken becomes amazingly juicy. Chicken becomes tough when the water evaporates during frying. 
pre-marinating the chicken in this liquid reduces the shrinkage of the chicken muscle fibers and keeps the chicken moist, making it juicy even after being fried in oil. Marinate the chicken in this water for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, pat dry each piece of chicken with paper towel. I prefer it with the skin on, by the way. So at this time, be careful not to remove the skin. Seasoning is done here. Beat the egg well and set aside. Sprinkle salt and pepper. Add the sake. Soy sauce. Sugar. Grated ginger. Add the half the amount of egg. Mix well. The key this time is to use only ginger without garlic. It's very tasty with larger amount of ginger. Refrigerate for 20 minutes to let the flavor soak in. After 20 minutes, mix flour and potato stooge in a spirit bowl. Once well mixed, lightly drain the juices from the chicken and transfer to the bowl of flour. Allow the flour to coat the entire chicken. The key is to roll the chicken with the skin on the outside as if wrapping the meat with the skin before placing it in the oil. Roll up any pieces that do not have the skin on them and put them in as well. By first soaking the meat in water, it's difficult for the moisture in the meat to evaporate during frying, resulting in a plump and juicy fried chicken. The outside turned out nice and crispy. Squeeze lemon over it if you like. It's delicious with mayonnaise and nanami togarashi. The last one is stir-fried meat and vegetable teishoku. Some people may have the impression that stir-fries are mundane and boring. However, if you try this recipe, I think it will change your concept of stir-fried meat and vegetable. First, let's prepare various vegetables. I use cabbage, green bell pepper, carrot, and onion. The meat is thinly sliced pork. The key is to drain the vegetable thoroughly. You should definitely try this seasoning as I was able to recreate the restaurant-like taste. Put oyster sauce, soy sauce, sake, chicken stock powder, sugar, black pepper, potato starch, and water. Mix well. The seasoning is ready. So let's stir fry the veggie. The key here is to use more oil. I actually wanted to fry the vegetable in oil as if I were frying a pork cutlet or other deep fried food, but I didn't want to use a lot of oil, so I fry them like this. Often, tasty stir fry vegetables in restaurants are seasoned after the vegetables has been through the oil. To reproduce it at home, it's important to fry it in more oil. Fry in hot oil for one minute. Then add the green bell pepper and bean sprout. Once cooked to a certain degree, remove these ones. There is a little too much oil, so I drained a little oil. Maybe 2 tablespoons of oil is just right for this amount of veg. Next, fry the pork. Season with a little salt and pepper. When pork is cooked, return vegetables and add the sauce. Stir fry over high heat for 1-2 to two minutes as the potato starch should be through cooked. By the way, I forgot to add garlic powder to the sauce. So I add it here. Thanks to the potato starch, the ingredients and the sauce are well blended together. My husband has always said he wanted his vegetable stir fry to be like in the restaurant and I was finally able to answer his request. This has joined his list of favorites. I hope you will like it too.